my topic, like autobiographical and biographical accounts of Acharya Tulsi. So first of all, if I'm talking about the autobiography and biography, it is a special historical genre. And in this genre, I would like to give a brief dis account of the biographies in Therapanth, because this is a long tradition and it is written, the first biography of Acharya Bhikshu, Bhikshu Jas Rasayan in Marwadi, then Bharimal uh, Charitta, sorry, and Rishi Rai Sujas by Jay Acharya. And these all three biographies are in Marwadi and especially in uh, poetry form. Then Jay Sujas by Acharya Magwa, and it is also in uh, verses. Then Acharya Tulsi, during his time, he took that all Acharya should have their own biographies and he took account and he did Manik. There is a great history of biographies and autobiography in Therapanth. But um, in this genre, especially in 2008, Balbir wrote, to my knowledge, religious autobiographies from Jane Milieu have not yet attached any attention beyond the Jain circle. And it is very true. Very few people know about it and very few autobiographies came into the light. Because writing an autobiography is not an easy task. Acharya Tulsi also accepted it. And uh, writing an autobiography, it means a person should disclose himself uh, from the inner core of his own being. And that is sometimes it is not easy to every person. So Acharya Tulsi's autobiography, and that is known as Mera Jeevan, Mera Darshan, My Life, My Vision. Acharya Tulsi, the ninth head of Therapanth, born on 20 October 1914, and is uh, passed away on 23rd June 1997. And this autobiography is edited by Sadvi Prabhukha Kanak Prabha and volumes released 18, and published by Adar Sahitya Sang Churu, and first published in 2002, and then one one volume every time, so until 2011, all published. Mera Jeevan Mera Darshan, read some question. Is it a biography, or an autobiography, or a memoir? Because the author, himself didn't write all the biography, uh, auto, autobiographies, but only 30 pages were written by Acharya Tulsi, and those are not only written, but he's given dictations. So it is a memoir, or sometime you see, it is not actually an a memoir, because it is beyond than that. There are more than experiences, and there is something special day to day, so I'm not accepting it as a memoir or collection of the diaries. So it is a diary, and in a diary, if you go through the diary, there should be uh, some dates, some uh, issues, day by day, so here in his diary, we can feel there is a gap, sometime one day, two days, some one week, two day, week, or sometime it is for <coughs> one month. So uh, sometime it is a question, is it a real diary or not? The, now the third point, it is editor's justification. Because Sadvi Pramukha, in his life, took this decision that she should edit, and he given an order to her that you will be uh, an editor of my all diaries. So uh, in this position, she uh, says that these diaries, Acharya Tulsi started in 1950 till 1997, and it is uh, this autobiography, My Mera Jeevan Mera Darshan, is not only based on the diaries, but there is some contribution in different, different felicitation uh, volumes, 
where it is written about Acharya Tulsi by different ascetics and scholars and some journals. They also provide material for this biography and autobiography. Acharya Tulsi's diaries in 1950s and he started it in Haryana, a town, uh, town known as Hansi. And the last day, even in the last day of his death, he wrote his diary. And one week before, he wrote, oh, it is time. I did a lot of things, and my health is not good, and I should do fasting unto death. It is in, mentioned in his diary. But uh, he couldn't fulfill his desire because uh, the death occurred so soon, sudden, that the fa his desire remained unfulfilled, fasting unto death. And his diaries is a huge record uh, of historical journeys because being a Jain Acharya, Jain monk, he traveled far and wide throughout the India more than 80,000 kilometers. Every year uh, for Chaturmas, for rainy retreat, he stayed four months in a place, but rest of the eight months is always moving. So he traveled, and during this traveling, there is so many things he included about the geo geography, about the history of towns, city, historical places, and also the people, their behavior. So these diaries are, I think, a treasure of huge knowledge, vast knowledge of mankind, of history, geography, and other subjects. And especially these 18 volumes of Mera Jeevan, Mera Darshan, not published with the reference of each day with the stick to the diary. So it is very clear that we cannot accept it as a diary form. And it is not a biography because Sadvi Pramukha chose to write in first person's voice because the first volume, which is completed by Acharya Tulsi himself, but the rest of all these volumes were written in the same pattern, and Acharya Sadvi Pramukha tried to keep her position as an auditor. Acharya Tulsi said, I have had this tendency to do something different, innovative, since childhood, and will sustain this habit until my last breath. In this attempt, I have tried to plant a small seed of Jain Vishwabharati University in this desert with the challenge that it could be possible to grow a garden in this desert. And he had a deep attachment with academic world. Always in his busy schedule, wherever he visited to some big cities and wherever there is an university, he tried to be there. He addressed uh, the professors, lectures, and the students in different department of the different universities. So it was his keen desire to uh, be active in the academic field also. It is from volume 20th. Uh, Mera Jivan, Mera Darshan. Now, I have a question that Acharya Tulsi's personality was very different and the editor's personality was very different. Sadvi Pramukha, uh, she is not so open like Acharya Tulsi. So at that time, it is created a dilemma. Is it possible for her to you know, write the same thing in the same manner how he liked? But uh, I don't know. This is a question for me, and maybe it is a question for further study that someone can do a study. Is she can do what 
what Acharya Tulsi desired, or she can, uh, can't write what he desired. So it is a question. <coughs> Autobiography, a narrative account uh, of an extended period of someone's life. So Acharya Tulsi's life, a long life, and long life is many events. So Sadvi Pramkha tried to keep attached and she also kept a distance uh, because not analyzing anything else, just keeping uh, as it is, try to be true to his diaries. Also, no criticism or nothing he put from her own side. But I'm thinking to be an insider, it is very, very difficult task to write something and to keep himself or herself away from that. So I think the same question was before Sadhvi Pramukha, that she was so close and she was the head nun of 600 nuns of the Therapan sect, so always in the close contact of Acharya Tulsi. So at that time, uh, when she painted this all Mera Jeevan Mera Darshan, at that time definitely the insider is coming up and she has taken uh, her own uh, feeling inside it because being an insider. But editor presented herself that uh, I try to stick to his diaries. Example from the volume 20th, Three, two, uh, page uh, 237, 15th April 1992, Wednesday, the program was attended by, from Digambar tradition, representative of Murti Pojak sect were also there like this. So in this next paragraph, he states, I'm expressing reverence to Bhagwan Mahavir. So, it is in the words of Acharya Tulsi. Here we see that her language is presenting facts and not adding much in it. But her voice is visible in many places. In the title itself reflect, it is an autobiography. But it seems to be more of a submissive tendency of editor. As she says, I have taken this challenge to be editor of this work only with energy blessed on me by Gurudev. So in the preface of volume first, she accepted that it is a big challenge for me and it is due to blessing of Acharya Tulsi, I'm doing it. And the third position, not an autobiography. Autobiography differs from biography, not only it's uh, evidently, but more subjective narrative point view, and but it is inclusiveness. An autobiographer cannot recount her or his own death, because you can see in the last volume, the whole uh, picture of his death is also written. Uh, in the same voice. So it is, I think, um, here we can feel that it is not an autobiography, but a biography. So these three, it is a memoir, diary, autobiography, and biography. So still, it, it is a point of investigation. Those who have the proper knowledge of and deep knowledge of this genres, and then uh, on this criteria, one can say it is an autobiography or biography. Oh. <laughs> but I have a little more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. These volumes, each of these volumes containing 300, 400, 350 pieces. And just I have taken the first volume. And this is divided into the two parts. The first chapter described Tulsi's childhood 
For example, the story behind the name of Ladnu. He described few pages, his hometown. And um, then um, his family background and especially impact of his mother because his father passed away at very early age and mother was guardian and it is interesting uh, reading from Nalini Balbir's uh, article, Varni and um, um, Gyanmati Mataji, their life also affected by mothers and mother is the central part of family life and the same thing Acharya Tulsi narrates and the seed of religious activities, going to nuns, visiting to monks from the very childhood because mother was widow and she always keep Tulsi with her to take uh, monks place in uh, lectures and different activities. So the seed was sown uh, at the early age when he was five or four, he used to go with her mother. So special impression of mother on him. And interesting to note, in this part, Acharya Tulsi accepted in the page 32 and 33 that when he was a child, her sister-in-law given some money, oh, Tulsi, you go to market and bring some nails. At that time, he brought the nails, but the change which was left, he kept inside his pocket. And after a few days, he realized, oh, this is a kind of theft. I should not keep this money without informing my sister-in-law. And he went to his mother and confessed it. Okay, mother. And then mother suggested, okay, go and return this um, change to your sister-in-law. So this, he, uh, this incident he wrote in his first part of the biography. And the second incident, once he wanted to test it, the divine being's existence. So he went to Bhairam's temple and there he uh, stole some coconuts. So it is again one incident, second incident in his life. So very clearly he wrote about his weaknesses. And this is, and the second part as a child monk, he initiated under the holy feet of Acharya Kalugani and how he got the training and Guru's love and an environment to start his study because in his early childhood, he just learned some tables of mathematics, but after his initiation, he learned Hindi, Sanskrit, Prakrit, and he learned 22,000 slokas by heart. And these slokas related to um, grammar uh, and uh, um, Prakrit, especially Prakrit and Sanskrit. Uh, because at that time, in Therapanth, nobody used Hindi language. Because Kalugani uh, had the old pattern in his mind. So everybody, all monks, nuns, and lay followers, they used to speak in Marwadi. And the place of sojourn was in Marwad, mainly in Marwad. Just the last part of Achari Kalugani's life, he traveled Malwa Ujjain, which is right now MP. And at the end of this first volume, Achari Tulsi uh, wrote how he kept belief on me that at the young age of 22, he given me um, the power, power transferred uh, as a designating successor of Acharya Kalugani to a young monk. So in this part, he wrote this. The second part, it is a part of struggle. And he, the struggle is within the sect and also outside the sect from other Jain sects. So this is, he made very clear. And in second part, somewhere else, he 
accepted his own mistake in the appointment of the head nun because once he mocked about his guru that he had appointed and sadvi she is not educated sadvi jhamku ji but after few years of his death uh, he appointed uh, his sister as a head nun sadvi lata ji and at that time uh, one of a one cent mantri muni said o tulsi gurudev tulsi he repeated the same mistake and in his biography he accept this and the third part like this these volumes and volumes i'm not taking all account of it in this um, small portion but uh, the especially in the reference of biographies of tulsi actually tulsi's biography first occurred in 1966 and written by acharya mahapragya uh, acharya tulsi jeevan or darshan written in hindi and second biography dharma chakra ka pravartan when he completed his 50 years of acharyaship in 1986 and this is written in hindi and also translated in english and uh, the stunning the wheel of dharma and the third biography written by sadvi pramukha in 1998 after the death of acharya tulsi it is in marwadi tulsi prabodh and the fourth biography which is written by acharya mahapragya and it is tulsi yaso vilas and he designed in three parts but unfortunately acharya mahapragya uh, completed the first part of his biography tulsi yaso vilas and finally he said goodbye to this world so this is still in half way and so these four biographies all are published and interestingly i would like to uh, keep uh, peter's research that biography call account of terapand there is a huge account and systematic research started in 1946 and by Uh, order of by the order of acharya tulsi uh, to muni navratan mal and he produced a huge literature uh, 25 part in 30 volumes and these volumes are available and published uh, and here the huge account of from the day one to the last till date monks and nuns saman and samnis all are included in sasan samudra so um, in terapanth there are a tradition of biographical writing and autobiographical writing which is a special part of historical genre and uh, it is open that many scholars are here they can take um, their insight inside it and they can produce something from this vast historical genre thank you